Hey ye, hey ye, come one, come all, and um, welcome to today's tutorial where we're going to be developing a web scraping API, so a data API for stock prices and stock data. And so essentially what we're going to do is build out the API that is currently supplying this front end. So I can just go in here and type in a stock ticker, send it through to the API that we'll be building and it's gonna pull all this data and some stock prices and feed that to our front end. Now today's video, we're just gonna be coding the back end system, but if you want to learn how to code this front end in Svelte, uh, leave a comment down below and we'll make that happen. But anyway, so as I said, we're gonna be building a Node.js Express Cherio web scraper uh, and we're gonna be hosting it on Heroku at the very end and we're going to have it web scrape these adjusted close prices uh, from Yahoo Finance and the important stats uh, for a particular stock ticker, uh, pull all that data, sift through it, process it, and send it to whoever requests from our particular API. So that's pretty much the introduction. Uh, it's gonna be a great video, tell your friends, tell your family, uh, sit around the campfire and let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is minimize this and come into my terminal and I'm just going to make a directory called stock data API and I'm going to cd into stock data API and I am going to run npm init dash y and that's going to load a package.json file so we can see it just there and I'm also going to make a server.js file so I'm going to go touch server.js cool so that's going to make a little server file so if I list we can see that now <coughs> now for this particular project we're going to need a couple of dependencies and they're going to be uh, so we're going to go npm install, or just i, Cheerio, Axios, and Express. We'll let them install. And we're going to install one more, npm i dash dash save dev. It's going to be a development dependency called nodemon. And that's just going to automatically restart our server um, when we make changes to our code. And so now I'm going to open it up in a terminal using this special little command that's going to pop up. We've got all our excellent files here. And the first thing I'm going to do is come into our package.json and make a developer dependency and just say nodemon server.js. I'm just going to ignore uh, package.json. Just, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just an example of how you'd use an ignore flag to make it not restart on package.json changes. <coughs> cool, so now we've got that, we can come into our server.js and start making our app. Uh, and so at the top, I'm gonna initialize an app. And so for that, you have to require express, and that gives you a function, which I'm just gonna call. And I'm also gonna define a port and set that to 8008. Down the bottom, we're gonna have app.listen. Uh, I'm gonna give it the port. I'm gonna give it a function that runs on server initialization and just say server has started on port and pass it the port. Cool, excellent. Uh, the last thing I'm actually gonna do is just change this port. So when you launch on Heroku, it has environment variables that you just want to use preferentially. And so we're just going to say, if there's an environment variable, use that, otherwise use port 800, 8008. Cool, <clears throat> so that's our neat little uh, server. And so if we come in here and run our development script, we'll see that that server starts up on port 8008. And if I open up, uh, <clears throat> a Chrome tab and go to local host 8008 we'll get absolutely nothing because we haven't defined any routes and so that's the first thing we're going to come in here and do uh, so we're going to go app.get we're just going to do a default route 
and for that we're going to do request and response uh, open that up as a function and we're just going to go res.status200 to show them that it's working and send we're going to send them some HTML and an h1 tag and we're going to say James's oops, I'll use a backslash James's uh, stock data API cool and so if I just save that we should be able to come over here and we see that pop up so that's excellent now after we have that route we're gonna define our first API route and that's gonna take in a dynamic variable and I'm gonna call that ticker uh, and after that same as before we have request and response um, and I'm also going to in make sure that the user provides an API key or just a key and so what we're gonna do is um, destructure ticker from request.params so you'll see how that works in a second and I'm also going to const uh, destructure key and that's going to be request.query destructure them and with them I'm just going to make a guard clause so if they don't have the ticker or there's no key then we're just going to return res.status we're going to give it a 400 level status and just say send <coughs> let's just send them a message that says uh, please provide key and ticker excellent okay so let's just restart the server and we should actually be able to test that out um, so in this particular case I'm just going to give it the key mRNA uh, and so we get that message which is super cool and then if I come in here and just add a key we get nothing because we haven't actually defined a successful route so if it's successful it's just res.send hi let's see if that works restart that cool there it is excellent so that is a working you know endpoint back in API endpoint you can do whatever you want with it and it actually also puts us in a position where we can start building out our code um, <coughs> and start using Cheerio to do some web scraping. So we're just going to come up here at the top and I'm actually just going to, we have the, the we need, we're going to use Axios to fetch the HTML and we're going to use Cheerio to kind of scroll through it and get everything. So we're going to have to require both of them. So we've got Axios and we've got const Cheerio equals required Cheerio cool and so now down here I'm just going to comment this out for the second into that we're going to go const data is equal to axios.get and we're going to have to provide it the URL of the information that we want so for the second what I'm going to do is just say let ticker I mean we actually have the ticker so the first thing we're going to do just to check if everything's working is come over here copy this link let's just uh yeah let's try stats let's try historical uh hmm. sure let's do historical data first so we'll copy this link and we're just going to say const url is equal to to back ticks because it's going to be a dynamic string and anywhere it has mrna we're just going to swap that out for ticker Um, and with that we're going to pass that to here now this is an asynchronous uh, call so we're going to have to make sure that our route has an async await functionality uh, also if you want to learn more about async await just leave a comment and I'll be sure to make a video on it um, and from there we just load this into Cheerio so it's Cheerio.load data and we assign it to the dollar sign variable and now what we can do is res.send uh, one of the methods that you can do is HTML and it will just read out all the HTML and so if we actually do this it should give us the entire page which it totally does so that's all the HTML that it reads um, which is actually like pretty funky so that's just a good way to check that your Cheerio web scraping is working is that if it resends all the HTML 
then it's working. It means that we've got it all. So next what we can do is come into the HTML. We're gonna go into the main site and we're going to inspect some elements because we want to select particularly this adjusted close value. And so if I just come in here, we see that it's the sixth uh, TD element inside of a table row inside of a table body. And so we should be able to come into here and just select that straight off the bat with a uh, const, let's just say prices, we'll call it all prices. And if we just give it the selector, so it was TD nth child six, um, we apply the dot get method so that it returns every different element that it finds, it returns them in an array. And then we're gonna dot map, take each value and we're gonna read it in as a Cheerio object because currently we're just returning HTML and we're gonna use the text method to extract the inner text. And so basically that just says, okay, so we're gonna pass it this HTML element and it's just gonna read whatever inner text it can find within it. So that should just be the price. And so now if we, uh, we could do one of two things in this particular instance. So we could res.send <coughs> an object and just say data prices, for example. So why don't we try that and see if that works? Oh, that's the wrong one, this one. So that's pretty cool. That's all the prices, uh, which is actually super neat. So that was really easy. And so now that that system's working, we can actually start to build out a proper application. And so what we're gonna do is come down here and we're actually going to put this inside of a try uh, catch block error. And so if we get an error, we're gonna do res.status500 uh, and we're going to send that as message error.message. Uh, and we can move all this logic into the try block uh, just for some better error handling. So, yeah, cool, we've got our key. You could implement some API key logic here if you want. Um, now, for this particular instance, we're going to want to send two parallel requests to request both the data from uh, historical data and statistics simultaneously instead of doing them in parallel. And the way that you do them is with promise.await and you pass it an array of promises and it will send them all out and they will uh, come back in parallel instead of in series. And so that's gonna reduce our computation time massively. And so we're going to just say const stock info is equal to await promise.all. And this is where we're gonna have to pass it the array of promises which we will be creating, oh, why did that happen? Uh, using a dot map applied to, uh, to return an array. And so you'll see how that works in a second. So in here, we're gonna need the key statistics as one, and we're also going to get the history. And so you'll notice that that is the difference between the two URLs if we come back in here, if we click on history, it says history and the only thing that changes is that variable in there. And so what we're gonna use is that array to produce another array. So this is gonna be the type and <clears throat> that is going to also be an asynchronous function. So we're gonna have to pop an async in there. This is where we're going to construct our URL. So our URL is actually, instead of having history, we're just going to put in type and we have successfully created our URL and everything else kind of stays fairly equivalent. Um, <clears throat> and then what we can do is put this into some error handling. So if type is equal to history, then we want to calculate prices, which we've already proven works. And so then we can just return prices in an object. So we're gonna go like that, nice. And so this is going to assign the array prices to a key um, that is also prices. So that's super cool. 
And then we can put the logic in for the other one. So if the type is equal to key statistics, uh, we can do the logic as follows. So for this particular instance, what I'm actually going to do is, uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? Okay, so the first thing is I actually don't want every single metric here. And so what I've done, because I'm organized, is I've gone through and every one that I like, I've made an array with all of them uh, as a string of all of them. And so I'm just going to copy that in here and I've called it metrics. And these are all the, so initially we're going to return all of the metrics and we're going to process through them um, and just to see which ones we like. So the link to this code is in the description. So that will take you to my GitHub. And so you can just copy this straight in. These are definitely the best metrics. And after that, what we are going to do is some magic. And you will see that here. So what I'm going to do just to make the example is I'm going to come up here. And we're going to return res.send. And we're going to do a similar thing to what we just did above. Const data is equal to await axios.get. And this time we're going to pass it the other link, key statistics. Um, and so we're just going to check that we can select everything. And so I'm going to go const dollar sign is equal to cherio.load data. And what I'm going to do is see if I can filter out everything in here that I don't really need by selecting this section, which has all of the most relevant information. So I don't want everything else. I just want all of the stuff inside this section, which you can kind of see when it's highlighted. And so we can select that by using the data test attribute. So if we come in here and just go res.send and then go, so that's section with data test is equal to uh, QSP statistics. And if we just return the HTML as we kind of saw earlier, we should get back just the relevant information from that particular page. And so here you can see that it's actually just really nicely given us all of our valuation measures. So that's excellent. That's super cool. Um, <clears throat> and so now that that works, I'll just comment this out because we might need it later. But we can come down here and start writing some logic for all of that. So I've seen that the selector that I just used returns all this good stuff. And now we just have to process it. And so to process it, what we're going to have to do is use a little bit of magic. And that magic is going to come from something that I have pre-prepared because it's a little bit complicated, but it's not too complicated. So essentially, we're going to be wanting to select uh, these TD elements within the rows, uh, which are within the table body. And so that's actually not going to be too hard. And so essentially, all we're going to have to do is say, okay, let's assign it something. Uh, let's say const <clears throat> statistics. So let's just copy the selector up here. Um, const stats is equal to that selector. Um, and we'll have to close that. And then we're going to dot get it so that it returns as an array. Uh, and then what we're going to do is dot map so that we can do some additional processing to it. So we're just going to say val come in here and that's going to return it as a particular item. So that's going to have our HTML in an item, which is super cool. And so now we're in this scoped function of the dot map. We can just reset our Cheerio.load functionality with our new val. And that's super handy because it means that now 
uh, we essentially can just reduce the stuff that we're dealing with. So in this particular case, we can go const valuations is equal to, and from this, we can select, um, it's going to be, let's just have a look. So we've selected this body. That first div is the currency in USD, so we don't want that. So it's going to be the div second child. Um, and so actually we could make this even better up here and we could just say, uh, let's have a look. Let's put this back and just change that to uh, div uh, nth child two. And if we run this code, we should actually have eliminated that external layer. And you can see now that we just have directly our, our divs with our different stock information, which is perfect. And so now we can just go through these and process all the different values that we have to look at. So let's just comment that out once more, come down here and add the Div, the little arrow just means a direct descendant or child, and we're going to nth child two dot get. We're going to load that in here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to select the uh, I guess we can just start taking all the row values really. So we can just go any TR, I think. Actually, let's just try that up here. So let's once again recomment this and see if we just add in the selector TR.html. Let's see what we get back. Okay, so it returned one of them, but that's actually a good sign because that means that it's working. And so now if we return a dot get, for example, so let's say we dot get them. That should return all of them in a, as an array. And if we send this back as an object, let's see if that gives us back a, oh, have to restart uh, HTML. Oh, we have to remove the dot HTML. So dot get should just find all of them, return them as an array. And then we're just gonna dot map over them quickly and load it into a Cheerio instance and just go val and just return the inner text of them. And so that should just return the inner text as an array which we have given to the key data. And so let's see if that restarts. Refresh that. And so we can actually see that that's come back with everything super nicely. And so we should actually just be able to select that and then do some processing with it. So I'm just going to copy this selector, come down here, and as it turns out, we don't even have to reload that in. We can just go straight to the next step, have this selector, and we can just get straight to data processing. So here we've seen that we have to return, we have to load that into uh, return the inner text. So now that we have stats as that, we're going to apply some methods to it. And these methods aren't too complicated, but basically we're going to go through and make sure that the text is, uh, is uh, part of our metrics that we actually want to keep. So we're going to, let's think about this. How do I want to do it? There's a million ways that we could do it. Either we could filter, I actually think we're going to use a dot reduce. So I'm going to bring that down onto a new line, dot reduce. Uh, and in our dot reduce, we have an accumulator and we have a current, and we also have a default object. So for that, I'm going to use an object, and I'm going to have the item as the key and the value as the value. <coughs> so as we're going through each of them, we're going to have a bit of an if check to see what we return. And it's going to be a slightly complicated if check, but we're essentially going to use reduce that goes through everything and checks whether the element contains one of these text items. 
and if it does it'll return it if it doesn't it'll just ignore it and that's how we're going to filter through this uh, so if um, if and this is where we're going to have our ever so slightly well actually let's just make it a different thing so const included check is equal to metrics dot reduce so there's going to be a second reducer function but it's good for practice current is equal to and we're going to give it a default value of false and so essentially if the if the accumulator uh, is true then we just want to make sure that we continue to return true because that means it's been found uh, and otherwise we're just going to return we're gonna we've got the text so it's going to be current dot includes um, it's gonna be a double durance current so I might go current two so it's going to be current two dot includes current so where no it'll be the other way around current has to include current two yeah that's exactly right so essentially this is going to return for instance enterprise value this whole string and we're going to check whether or not this contains enterprise value if it does then we keep it if it doesn't then it gets cut um, let's just have a look see real quick enterprise value enterprise value dot revenue okay so I've been taking that one cool <clears throat> uh, so now that we have this if check we're gonna use it so if we find that it's included then we can do some logic otherwise we're just going to return an empty string well actually even better we can just return the accumulator unchanged and if it is included then we're just going to return spread the accumulator uh, and we're going to go the metric which oh, so somehow we're gonna to have to find the metric or at least filter it out so it's gonna be a similar thing to our included check maybe I should do a separate one completely yeah, so we're going to do a separate one completely. We're just going to say const title is equal to metrics.reduce. Uh, honestly, reducer functions are amazing. And this is just going to default to a string. So we found that it's included. We just have to figure out which one it is. So uh, if same as before, caro includes um, car2 then what we're going to do is oh, this needs to be car2 we're going to go return car2 otherwise we're just going to return the string as it is and so this should go through and filter at least figure out which one is the title and set it to title and then here we can go title and we can set that equal to the whole string, which is just current, except now what we can do is car.replace uh, and we can replace um, title with empty and that will just leave us with the value. So that's super cool. And there is a syntax error here because I believe this is the if check so that's how it's meant to be so if it's included then we return this object just like that and this should so this processes this all of those strings it goes through and just says okay if <coughs> we find that's included we're going to return this processing otherwise we're going to return nothing and so we can probably just console.log 
stats and check if this is working. So if we come over here, refresh this, uh, and if we go to console, we got absolutely nothing, and that's probably because we have to comment out all this good stuff so that the code actually reaches it. Oh, and prices is not defined, so we got an error, but that's actually good because we can see that everything down here has worked. So it's found the market cap and it's processed everything perfectly, uh, which is actually just what we want. So we could, um, well actually there's, there's nothing more to it. That's pretty much it really, that's excellent. Uh, obviously now we aren't just gonna have prices, we're gonna have more than just prices. Prices doesn't even exist in this context, to be honest, because it's actually hidden within the stock info. So what we're going to want to return instead is stock info. Um, and we also have to make sure that we return stats out of this. So this is going to be return stats. Actually, we're going to call it financials. Or even actually, I might just make that valuations. Cool, so let's see if that does what we want it to do. Let's restart that, res.send, let's see if that all loads up nicely. And there you have it. So now you can see that we receive, oh, well actually we can go one up since uh, this mapping re returns an object, we can just return the first, I mean it returns an array, we can just return the first thing. And then it's directly just an object that has all the valuations. Um, Although it appears to have forgotten about the other half, which is prices, and that's because we haven't included it. So what we might just do is just return stats like that. So that's going to be stats. Let's just, okay, so this is const stock info. And since stats is already an object, we can just go ahead and return that. And then to see what we're dealing with, we can just console.log stock info. See what that object has returned. We can see that we have an array of objects where it looks like so we get one object, then we get the array of objects. And so we actually want the array of objects, I think. Um, so let's see what we can do about that. If we return stats as an object, and run that again, oh, we have to restart this. Let's see what we get back. So in this particular case, we get an array that has an object. So actually, let's just see if we can filter that out. Okay, so I think that looks better. So now we're getting two objects. So one contains uh, all of the information and the other one contains the stats. So actually, let's just not return that in an array so it's consistent and see if we can get that back together. See what that gives us back. So somewhere we lost prices. Ah, uh, that's probably because we're just consoling the first one. Okay, cool, so now we've got prices. Oh, and then we do want this to be stats. Okay, let's. 50th time lucky. Okay, excellent. So now we have an array that has the first object and there is stats and the second object is prices. And so now what we can do is just res.send. We're gonna go dot reduce once more, accumulate it current. Uh, and in here what we're gonna do is since it's an array of two objects, so the current is going to be the object. And so we're going to just Hmm, how do I want to do this? So we're going to make sure 
that this reduce returns an object by default and we're going to return uh, an object spread the accumulator and have current which is going to be the object so the key is going to be object dot keys current uh, zero although that actually just has to come in here and the value is going to be uh, object dot values current zero let's see if that works some magic and there you go look at that we got prices we got stats everything you could possibly want I mean the only thing you could possibly do is come through and convert these into integer values but I don't think it's the end of the world um, but yeah so now that that information is all sending across and your API is totally live well it's not totally live it's fully working we can come through and just clean it up so we can get rid of all of these oh, don't want to get rid of too many things I uh, will add a status in here res.status 200 successful send the data get rid of that console and that's the only one cool so our server is all up and running now it's time to host this bad boy so that we can use it in our front end project and so as I mentioned for that we're going to use a wonderful application known as Heroku so if we just come over to Heroku login uh, it's really pretty straightforward so we go new create new app we're gonna give it a name call it Henry uh, pick Europe or United States it's up to you whichever one you're closest to we're gonna want it to connect it to our github so I'm just gonna do that right now and upload this to my github and so now that it's connected to my github I can just come in here go github type in the name stock data API search for that bad boy let's see if it comes up it does right up the top connect to it uh, let's go enable autumn yeah we'll click enable and let's deploy the branch now it should be noted that sometimes there's some finicky behavior with web scrapers and deploying on live so there may be some code that we have to go back and change but we'll give it a chance and see if it works uh, and so this is going to give us basically a live endpoint for this code and so if we come up here we can see that it returns our first route correctly um, thanks to process.env.port and if we come in here and just look at the logs we should also see that it's automatically uh, given us a port this is going to be the interesting part uh, because Heroku often has particularly bad issues with uh, selectors and spaces or funky characters inside them so I imagine this is the part that might break but we're just going to try it anyway so we're going to go mRNA question mark key is equal to James we have our logs open let's run that and so you can see that we get all the prices back but stats is giving us absolutely nothing uh, but this is all working so that is all good so for some reason the selector is not happy and so what we're going to do is just come up to this first step and test it with just this to see what HTML we're getting back except this time we're just going to give it this section to see if we can get the whole section back and for this particular example what we're going to do is just cut out all of this extra baggage and just return the HTML method so that we can get a visual look at what might be happening in this particular instance and so if we just get that to redeploy we can have a look at what we're working with and so here we can actually see that the layout is different from what it previously was and so we might just have to ever so slightly adjust our selectors for this new layout so if we look at this content here we suddenly have some new 
divs and stuff where all the content's a little bit different. And the main difference is, is that earlier we saw that it was actually two divs. If we look up here, uh, inside this section, wherever it was. So we've got the body. Let's just see if we can find it again. So we have this section. If we open that up, we can see that there's two divs, whereas in this version, there's actually three. So our second div selection is going to be selecting this one, whereas we actually want it to get the third one. So if we just update this, so if we go back a second uh, and add in nth child third and send that off, let's see what information we can get back. And so we can see that we're getting all the information back correctly, but the issue is, is that now what it's doing is it is combining everything into one string. That's going to be a nightmare to separate. So we might have to get creative. And so if we're extra clever in here, extra, extra clever, what you'll find that we can do is we can return only the second two elements, TD elements that are contained within this thing. So if we dot map this and open this up and just say const percentage is equal to cherio.load and let's load in val. So this is our new val and essentially we only want Note there were multiple columns. We only want the first and second column, so we're just going to go for the first two. So we're going to go const, uh, how about key vowels is equal to dollar sign bracket td. It's going to get every element. We're going to dot get, and then we're going to dot splice it from zero through to one. So that should be the first and second elements. And then what we can do is dot map once again val and return the text from them. Um, val dot text. And then if we just return key vals. Let's see what that gives us back. And that actually returns something that resembles a bit more what we're looking for. However, I forgot that splice returns up to and not including. So that's going to cost me another deployment. Good thing this is free. It's just a slightly longer process. And that actually worked nigh on perfectly, uh, which is great because it means that we can take this <coughs> logic that we have here and just implement it further down. So instead of, let me just copy all of this good stuff. Uh, I think I'll need all of that. So I'll copy that. Um, and here, what we can do is where it returns stats. So this logic's all gonna have to change a little bit. So we're just gonna come down here and just say, const stats is equal to and we'll comment this out. So we'll comment that out. And we know that we're going to be working with this information here. So what we're going to have to do is see that. So it returns an array of arrays. So the first thing we're going to want to do is filter through everything that is terrible. So we're going to filter. Uh, that's going to give us a bunch of arrays. Actually, even better, let's just dive straight into them. So we'll say reduce. So that's going to be an accumulator and a current. And we're going to want to return an object, right? 
So once again, this has given us everything that we don't want. So we're going to have to have a couple of checks. So the first one is going to be if current dot length is less than one, we're just going to return accumulator and not do anything. So that's going to be our first guard clause. The second thing is we're going to go if uh, we're going to do our included check. So we can just copy that code from up here, except now it's going to be slightly different. So included check that wasn't happy. I must have copied something incorrectly. So while well, let's just rewrite it. Okay. So const included check. So each of these is going to be an array of two elements. And the first one is going to be the first one. So we're going to want to go through all of them and it's just going to be uh, current dot reduce second accumulator and let's say car two and this is just going to be by default let's actually say yeah let's go false um, and as per usual if accumulator is already equal to true we're just going to continue to return true because it's already found it otherwise we're going to return car dot includes um, and this is going to be car two and it's going to be the zeroth index sorry I think I got that the wrong way around I think it's current zero includes cur and so this should be metrics which it is indeed okay cool so that should be our if check to see if it's included and so now we can just say if included well actually let's just do the opposite we'll keep, stick with the guard clauses because they're nice so if it's not included then we're just going to keep going past it so we'll just return the accumulator no change otherwise we're going to return and this is actually pretty easy we're going to spread accumulator and we're just going to go current zero and current one just like that and that should be stats and so if we save this and do hopefully our last deployment we'll see if we can get this amazing project up and running so we'll come through check the status build is in progress everybody cross your fingers cross your toes this is the moment of truth be prepared for disappointment and failure but I am slightly optimistic and now we test our code and it gives us the same thing because I totally forgot to comment all this stuff out and that's what it, it's hard being a Muppet so if we just repeat that process once more for good luck once again everybody cross your fingers cross your toes building in process it's deployed hurrah we have everything we have all of our stats all nicely separated we have all of our data the prices keep in mind that it's the most recent price first everything you could possibly want is sorted into an API and it's totally live and this is your link and so you could just go into your front end call this as much as you want and get all of this data absolutely magic if you found the video useful don't forget to like and subscribe once again if you want to learn how to build the front end leave a comment and if you want to know how to host this on a raspberry pi instead of doing it in the cloud you can just have it from your living room check out my blog on medium but yeah thanks for watching catch you guys later